May God bless you all. In our third and final sharing on blessings, we're going to see how blessing is used in the life of the church. The ritual has blessings for houses and schools and for the laying of their foundation stones, for stables, for the lower animals and every other building of any description, for which no special formula is at hand. There is also a special blessing for the bridal chamber. Lastly, inanimate things that subserve the equitable needs and convenience of society may receive from the church the stamp of her benediction before they are sent on their way to do their appointed tasks. Such, for instance, are new ships, new railways with trains and carriages, new bridges, fountains, wells, corn mills, lime kilns, smelting furnaces, telegraphs, steam engines, machines for producing electricity, the many serious accidents that occur explain the concern of the church for those whose lives are exposed to danger from these various sources. Now concerning the efficacy. The inquiry will be confined to the blessings approved of by the church. As has been said, the value of a blessing given by a private person in his own name will be commensurate with his acceptableness before God by reason of his individual merits and sanctity. A blessing, on the other hand, imparted with the sanction of the church, has all the weight of authority that reaches to the voice of her who is the well beloved spouse of Christ, pleading on behalf of her children. The whole efficacy, therefore, of these benedictions, in so far as they are liturgical and ecclesiastical, is derived from the prayers and invocations of the Church, made in her name by her ministers. Blessings may be divided into two classes, invocative and constitutive. The former, that is invocative, are those in which the divine benignity is invoked on persons or things to bring down upon them some temporal or spiritual good without changing their former condition. Of this kind are the blessings given to children and to articles of food. The latter class are so called because they permanently depute persons or things to divine service by imparting to them some sacred character by which they assume a new and distinct spiritual relationship. Such are the blessings given churches and chalices by their consecration. In this case, a certain abiding quality of sacredness is conferred in virtue of which the persons or things blessed become inviolable sacred that they cannot be divested of their religious character or be turned to profane uses. Again, theologians distinguish blessings of an intermediate source, sort by which things are rendered special instruments of salvation without at the same time becoming irrevocably sacred, such as blessed salt, candles, etc. Blessings are not sacraments. They are not of divine institution. They do not confer sanctifying grace, and they do not produce their, effort, their effects in virtue of the right itself, or ex opere operanto. They are sacramentals, and as such they produce the following specific effects. Excitation of pious emotions and affections of the heart, and by means of these remission of venial sin and of the temporal punishment due to it, freedom from power of evil spirits, preservation and restoration of bodily health, various other benefits, temporal or spiritual. All these effects are not necessarily inherent in any one blessing. Some are caused by one formula and others by another, according to the intentions of the Church. Neither are these effects to be regarded as infallibly produced, except in so far as impetration of the Church that this attribute of the Church has this attribute. 
The religious veneration, therefore, in which the faithful regard blessings, has no feint of superstition, since it depends altogether on the church's suffrages offered to God, that the person using the things she blesses may derive from them certain supernatural advantages. Instances are alleged in the lives of the saints, where miracles have been wrought by the blessings of holy men and women. There is no reason to limit the miraculous interference of God to the early ages of the Church's history, and the Church never accepts these wonderful occurrences unless the evidence in support of their authenticity is absolutely unimpeachable. Now, what about the right employed? Before a minister proceeds to impart any blessing, he should first satisfy himself that it is one which he is duly qualified to give, either by his ordinary or delegated powers. He should next use the prescribed right, as a rule, for the simple blessings of the ritual, a sultan, surplice, and stole of the requisite color will be sufficient. A clerk should be at hand to carry the holy water or incense if required or to prepare a light candle. The blessings are ordinarily given in a church, but if necessary they can be lawfully administered elsewhere according to the exigencies of place or other circumstances or privileges and without any sacred vestments. Now, Father God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' blood and the Holy Spirit, we thank you today for these three recordings you gave us. Thank you for the knowledge you gave us today to appreciate more and more the power of blessing. Help our priests to use blessing, to bless. Help them to understand, Father God, that by blessing they are preserving and restoring health, bodily health. They are also, through them, you impart on us various other benefits, temporal, spiritual, freedom from power of evil spirits, and also excitation of pious emotions and affections of the heart. And by means of these, remissions of venial sin and of the temporal punishment due to it are obliterated. We ask this, Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' blood, in the Holy Spirit. We ask also Our Lady to intercede for our priests in front of her beloved Son Jesus, so that all priests use their blessing the blessing which is conferred on them by ordination in a responsible and loving way for the kingdom of God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. And may God Almighty bless you and protect you. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.